Hello everyone, welcome back to our study series in Nehemiah. It is wonderful to see you all online. We pray that you'll be blessed. In the current climate, staycations are becoming more and more popular. And there has been a massive growth in something called wild camping. Now, for those of you watching who do not know what wild camping is, it is a trend where people go out into the wilderness with just a tent and essentials and survive the night on their own. No campsite, no caravan park, no facilities, no toilet, no shower, no electricity, no Wi-Fi, absolutely nothing. Just you and the elements. And there is something uh, romantic about stripping yourself bare of all modern luxuries and being one with nature. When you are totally isolated from the modern world, you begin to focus on what is important. When you are totally isolated from the modern world, you begin to see beauty in the more simple things in life. When you are totally isolated from the modern world, you begin to understand how reliant you really are on God. Fortunately, in our country, wild camping is not really wild. We can go out and do this rather safely. We don't have to worry about mountain lions, bears, wolves and foreign invaders. The worst we could possibly fear is a very cross badger. But it is still nice to get away, isn't it? It is still nice to, to cut yourself off from the modern world, to cut yourself off from our phones and televisions and relax. In our reading today, we see that Israel has a staycation. They go wild camping. They had finally finished and built the wall. Jerusalem was protected, it was safe, and as a result, it was flourishing. And we saw last time how they were shaping society around God's word. And we read here in Nehemiah 8, 14, that Ezra, when reading the law, the law of Moses, found out about the festival of tabernacles or tents, known to the Jews as Sukkoth, which by God's providence, happens to start this very week. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it amazing? Israel wanted to honour God, so they followed the teaching of this festival. So we read in verse 15 that the people went out into the hill country and collected branches um, from olive trees and myrtles and palms, and they made themselves temporary shelters. Essentially, they went wild camping. But there was so much more to this than meets the eye. As Jerusalem was growing in wealth, this festival kept everyone humble. Imagine it, if we as a nation had to sleep rough for one week a year, out in the streets, I am sure that we would be more grateful for what we have as a result. And I'm sure we would do more to support our homeless. The festival brought Israel back to the reality of who they were and where they had come from. It reminded them of God's provision in the wilderness and once stripped bare of all their luxuries that they now had, 
This festival allowed them to remember that they are still totally dependent on God. Exposed to extreme temperatures, the boiling hot sun in the day and freezing cold nights. Exposed to the threats of mountain lions and bears and foreign invaders with only an olive branch and some palm leaves to protect you. Friends, you are quickly reminded of your utter dependence on God. You are also far more thankful for what you have when you get home after such an experience. And what a witness this must have been for those outside looking in. To see an entire city give up their luxuries for one week for God. What a witness this must have been by them showing the world their utter contentment despite having nothing. Because to them, to Israel, God is everything. And we can learn a lot from this as Christians, can't we? I want to end, if I may, with a quote from Rabbi Jonathan Sachs about this festival. He says, sitting in the sucker, the tent, underneath its canopy of leaves, I often think of my ancestors and their wanderings across Europe in search of safety. And I begin to understand how faith was their only home. It was fragile, chillingly exposed to the storms of prejudice and hate. But it proved stronger than empires. Their faith has survived. Friends, I don't know what you're going through right now. We are all living in very strange times. And many of us are suffering. Many of us have lost loved ones. Many of us have lost our jobs. Many of us are anxious and fearful about the future. Our society has been stripped bare. But let me reassure you today that if you have Jesus, you have all you need. Friends, let faith be your home. Put your trust in God to get you through. God bless and I will see you Sunday. Amen.